Welcome back, if you stuck around, and I hope you did. This is Ken coming to you live from the Circle R Ranch. I got Jeff with me. Say hi, Jeff. Hello. You're supposed to say hi, Jeff. Hi, Ken. He just doesn't cooperate, but that's okay. Uh, he's our fill-in, uh, but rapidly becoming <laughs> my co-host yeah. here on Friday afternoons. Uh, we are very... I'm the co-host morning, with attitude. Friday morning, co-host with attitude. Zaz. Yeah, not a nice attitude like uh, LG when it's she's It's a bad there. attitude. It's a bad attitude, yeah. that's for sure. Uh, sorry about the uh, technical glitch there. We turned everything off and turned it back on, like you do. Tails on uh, <laughs> What do you know? Apparently it's working now. Uh, yeah, so it is Friday morning at the Circle R, and I hold, well, it's St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Sure. To um, all the Irish and all the drunks. We're Am I right? still. Or the Irish drunks? For a little while. I'm Irish, but I'm not drunk yet. Yeah, me. Yeah, same here. Same here. I hold in my hand the uh, brand new Rick Vito Soul Agent, and um, we are. We're. I started to talk about this before, so I have to pick up the thread. The thread is still. Can I grab it. I don't even remember what you're saying. I was Twenty-four gonna... years, Rick Vito, on tour with Bonnie mm -hmm. Raitt. And uh, Naylor went and saw and met him at Pine Knob uh, in Detroit. And um, one thing led to another, and Rick was playing a slingshot, a 2P90 guitar. And um, he ended up using it for his uh, Hot Licks Blues Slide guitar uh, video. And it was a pink slingshot with a black pickguard and cream pickups. Uh, I can see the cover of the video, uh, VHS, by the way if I may be so bold. Um, and that's how far we've come. <laughs> that's all right. Some of our original artist photos, we actually have slides. We have Kodachrome slides in our archives because we're right at the tail end of that in the late uh, 90s, uh, including Rick. I believe we have slides of Rick as well. And uh, that led to the first uh, Rick Vito signature slingshot, which was a metal top and back with a beautiful etching uh, there was the snake, which kind of looked like a river on the front, and the play while voodoo doll on the back. And a very, very, very hot uh, Reverend P90 style pickups. Very, very <laughs> hot uh, ceramic P90s. Um, and that was the, the OG. And there were a couple different versions of that. Um, 
There were some plain ones done as well that didn't have the etching on it, which are very cool and very rare. Uh, Adam has one of those, I do believe. And um, as a matter of fact, I think I saw Rick sign that for Mr. Baum uh, when Rick was out on tour with Greg a few years back. So uh, that original guitar then led to the uh, Art Deco masterpiece, which we refer to as the Rick Vito Classic, which was a single cutaway Carina body center ridge um, with some really cool sort of Art Deco striping on it. Um, but uh, set neck 24 and 3 quarter scale, very, very cool guitar, which we did for a number of years, which then lent itself into the uh, Soul Shaker, which was also a single cutaway, but with a uh, pearloid top um, that we did in sort of a, a black pearl or gray pearl and white pearl uh, with Alnico humbuckers, because that's where Rick was at that time. Having all of these guitars, and Rick's like, you know what, I really liked the best in this one, and I really liked the best in this one, and I really liked the best in this one. Henceforth, the Soul Agent. Uh, we are back to the bolt-on 25 and a half inch scale. Um, it certainly seemed to be, well, all the time that Rick, well, that we were doing the what we refer to as the Rick Vito Classic and the Soul Shaker, uh, Rick was taking his slingshot out two to play certain songs on the slide and uh, that led to a conversation um, I believe it might have been at a dealer in Chicago between me Rick and Naylor um, about how we could maybe incorporate everything into one model that would really kick it and check all of the boxes and that's where this comes from so this this checkered binding um, is made in Seattle by a company called uh, Gearian Instruments and they do beautiful work there and they actually glue layers of plastic together and cut through them uh, vertically in order to make this beautiful binding and uh, the binding was the feature of the soul shaker that that really stood out and the alnico humbucker in the bridge um, is the same on this model as it was in the soul shaker so that that is is really what the influence that came in from that model obviously the bolt-on neck um, with a very similar profile to what we had going on in the slingshot back in the day. And then uh, <clears throat> the Alnico P90 as well, which balances with the humbucker really, really well. Uh, our double agent model inspired the name Soul Agent. Uh, the double agent is obviously a humbucker in a single coil. We did put the Art Deco point uh, appointments on the Alnico. Let me know if I can move this so that you they need can... to turn it that way, other way. What? But I don't know if it's clear. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's clear, but you can yeah. see some beautiful, beautiful pictures of the, the uh, pickup appointment on the website. Um, and uh, yeah, this is a uh, chambered Carina body with a spruce top, uh, kind of like the uh, original Chargers and Jetstreams, and that's, which is why we're not, you don't see the arm contour here, but there is a belly contour and the chamber sort of goes below the belly cut. Um, it makes this very, very lightweight um, the Bigsby works very, very well, and uh, it has that sort of acoustic zing that the, um, that the spruce top sort of lends to these things. Um, in the intro before, the one that was all screwed up, I sort of ran through a bunch of the sounds on this, and I'll run through the sounds on this again because there's a lot to choose from. Um, I was playing just over a drone uh, with the tube screamer on because the sort of mild overdrive I think works really, really well with this guitar. But I will clean it up other than the, uh, this is amp reverb and me running direct in. Um, let's, uh, let's start with the neck, P90, shall we? And... So if you'll note, there's only two controls on this and that's volume and tone. And it's a traditional tone which mutes the highs. pull on the volume control engages the bass contour all the way. So again, eliminating the need for like a coil tap thing and a, because it's done in the circuit, it works across the entire uh, spectrum of the pickups and not only making that humbucker, here I am on the humbucker tone wide open and then let's engage that bass contour. 
There it is. You want to sharpen up those double stops, but it also works on the P90. Uh, and then with both pickups on, engage that bass contour. Pickups on there's also a phase. And the phase and the bass contour at the same time. Oh, here we go. Kind of fun to have that bass thing, especially with some overdrive and some slide, which Rick is so good at that I'm not even going to attempt it. And uh, going to the bridge by itself with the controls wide open. off the tone, pull the bass contour, put that tube screamer on it, That's a Rick Vito soul agent. I'd love to give you a slide demo. That is just not my forte. You want me to grab the slide? No, I really you don't. Sure? No, if you're going to grab the slide, grab somebody who can play slide <laughs> on your way back. Uh, I mean, I can fake it enough to maybe do a George Thorogood song in a cover band, but to sit here and pretend <laughs> that I know Speaking how to play LA slide for everybody. Yeah, Joe, <laughs> Jeff is a big, big, I, I would like to say that he's a closet George Thorogood fan, but that's <laughs> not the case. He is torn down the closet and used it for kindling. <laughs> yes. Yes, so, uh, yeah, and uh, the beautiful Oceanside Green, of course, and... Wow, oh, that feels so much better. Mm. But wait, there's more. <laughs> I probably should have played the black one because I actually know how to play black guitar. What a, you know so what, we might not have had sound it. issues if you were just played the black one. You know, that's, you're probably right. Yeah. Boy, the, that binding really pops on the black. I mean, just this. You know, it's funny. We launched this, and, and uh, the black one seems to be getting the most attention so far. And I really thought that this. It's a handsome guitar. It really is. It, it really is definitely right up my alley. So, uh, yeah. Uh, it, you know, and I want to talk about Rick, if I may. Uh, I mean, for just a second, I, there's... Something that um, maybe some of you have missed because of the unfortunate timing, mm -hmm. uh, the unfortunate circumstance of its release, but right, like, literally five or six weeks before all that lockdown shit started a few years ago, um, Rick did a tribute concert to Peter Green uh, with his good friend Mick Fleetwood and was the consistent guitar player. Rick is kind of known for, I mean, he's known for being in Fleetwood Mac and he's known for playing slide and all of these things, but he, I mean, he really made a name for himself with his slide playing and his ability to mimic the Peter Green, uh, Peter Green's tone and play like Peter in Fleetwood Mac and in tributes to him and such. And uh, he's just, he's just such an incredible artist. I have so much respect for him. Um, but so they recorded this tribute to Peter Green out over in London, and um, Christine plays on it, Rick plays on it, Mick Fleetwood plays on it, and they bring in all these special guests. And um, 
there's a version of Albatross with uh, David Gilmore playing. Um, really, technically, it's lap steel because it's not really a pedal steel. Uh, that Gilmore, of course, is very famous for using in Pink Floyd. Uh, Pete Townsend is on this thing. I, I, there's so many people on it, it's unreal. And it's just a beautiful thing. And, and it, got, it got mixed and released in the height of the COVID panic. Um, and so if you missed that, go check out Mick Fleetwood's uh, tribute to Peter Green concert. It's brilliant, and Rick's playing is brilliant on it. Um, and so, yeah, there's that. There's that, too. So, so many cool things um, to be said here. And uh, I, I've, I've retained the prototypes of these two guitars, and uh, I'll be taking them with me to the NAMM show in a few weeks. So if you're going to be at the NAMM show and you want to hold one, check it out in person, great. Uh, they shipped last week to dealers, so dealers have these. Uh, they are out. And, uh, yeah, Rick Vito, Soul Shaker, there you have it. How'd I do, Jeff? Did I Thank do a did. dust? I hope I did you justice, Rick, if you're watching. I hope I did you justice. Anybody have any uh, questions, comments, concerns? Did anybody tune back in after our technical difficulties? Yeah, we got some folks in here. Not a lot of questions coming through, but... People are into it. Because I thorough, I explained it so thoroughly. I what did more could such, they ask? I did such a good job. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, turn that tube screamer off. Uh, both pickups on this thing is awesome. You can hear that. Um, that. Here's the neck again. Bridge. Don't fear the Bigsby. I'm going to tell you guys a little. So I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Uh, the first question I got when I snuck a picture of this out on my Instagram page was, I mean, I'd pay extra for a hardtail. I just can't restring a Bigsby. Now, anybody can restring a Bigsby. I should have brought a string in here to show them how. I learned. But you take the string, and then right before you get to the ball end, you just take in your fingers and just bend it just a little bit. And you put the string under the roller, under the roller, and bring it over the top. And because the string is bent, you just catch it on the little hook and go. Uh, and I know Johnny Cole is going to chime in and say, put a spoiler on that thing. Yes. Vibramate makes the spoiler. Spoiler works very, very well. But even if you don't want to use a spoiler, it isn't that hard. Uh, and as you know, uh, our big speech shtick here at Reverend is uh, we make sure that these things are completely dialed in before they come to you. Um, <clears throat> I have had exceptionally good results with the Korean-made licensed big speed B50s and B70s. Everything seems to work on them very every once in a while i get like a b5 and i have to take it apart and adjust the roller a little bit we get these things they are spot on dialed in and if they're not we address the issues with them here a lot of tooting stability issues with big these come from the roller not functioning properly um, we make sure all of that stuff is dialed in before it leaves here and then of course we put our roller bridge on the guitar and you can be fairly aggressive with these things and <laughs> That's my favorite Bigsby move, by the way, is I just like to push down on the bar until it stops. And then, as you can hear, tuning stability is not an issue. And people don't usually, I don't think people go. Speak for yourself, bud. I do. <laughs> and usually it's for a gentle wiggle. Rick has these really cool things, these little um, palm pads, where he'll take the traditional Bigsby and, and it's set up so that it only move, it only, um, you can do like a B-bender thing mm -hmm. with it. It's super badass. Um, so, Nathan Weekly. Hey, man. Says, so pulling the volume turns the bass all the way off? Or is it yes. the, the, the volume? It's, it is as if you had a bass contour control on the guitar 
and you swipe the base contour all the way down mm -hmm. with your finger. So when you so pull the volume control, effect. it removes the bass so that it mimics the sound of a coil tap while leaving that bridge humbucker uh, both coils on. So you're looking for a single coil tone while still humbucking. And then the cool thing, of course, is it carries over to the P90 where you can still, you can lose some of that mid-range honk, that like lower mid honk, especially with a P90 in the neck position and have it sound more like a traditional neck single coil. And uh, I can run through that, I mean, again, just real quick. Um, I mean, here's your bridge with everything up. And then pull that instant bass contour. And on the neck. going a little bit off topic here, but he's got a question about the East Sider Custom for a second. All right, go ahead, so Johnny. Did Pete want the two-string string tree? Yeah. We are going to do a whole show on the East Sider Custom next week, folks. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. Um, I can see one from where I'm sitting, and I'm really, really happy about it. <laughs> we also launched the East Sider, East Sider Custom this Monday. I, I didn't feel like uh, it was worthy of cramming everything into one show because there's a lot to unpack. Uh, with the East Sider Custom too, there's a big story there, and uh, and it's a cool guitar. But yes, specs are online. And to answer your question, Johnny, um, Pete, uh, as well as Greg, are um, they've been playing for so long and their habits are so formed um, that they like to pull that string um, behind the nut, the G string behind the nut, and the triple tree confuses them. <laughs> uh, because the tension is different and they've been playing that way for so many years. I'm not going to tell you how many years because that would be rude, but let's just say a lot. We don't talk about age. We don't talk about age here. Um, but having the two strings down in the strings tree and then the G string up higher than all the others is something that they're used to and the tension of it is something that they're used to. Um, Greg loves the idea of the triple tree, which is why we sell it on his signature model because it works and he loves the functionality of it. Um, but on his guitars, he has decided to put the, uh, the, what we used to, the roller tree that we used to use for just the B and the E on his gig worthy guitars. Um, Pete was not only a, a matter of function, but it was a matter of form. Like in his mind, he didn't like the way the triple tree looked on the headstock. And we had sort of redesigned the headstock a little bit for Pete. So that's part of us sort of staying, even though we have this innovation that we feel rocks uh -huh. uh, in sticking, in being true to the signature artists. We use the old bent wire for Pete because he thinks it looks cool. So there you have it. Uh, Can you drop a triple tree on that bad boy? <laughs> So easily. Yeah. So easily. Pshaw. <laughs> or as Jeff Shh. Wynn would say, <sighs> <laughs> only when I'm tired and sick of it. Uh, Nathan says he missed the intro, but is the <laughs> Reverend extra springy spring in the Bigsby? Yes. Yes. The oh, I forgot about the old extra springy spring. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Yes, we put the soft touch spring in all of our Bigsby bottles. Thank you, Reeves, for the soft touch spring development. And uh, will it, will, the question is, will it boing? Oh, it will. Flutter. Oof. I think we all missed the intro today, bud. Well, there were two intros. I saw both. <laughs> Which one did you think was better, Jeff? I blacked out on the first one. Oh. Everybody's saying, oh, it sounds bad. Uh, I don't hear anything. And I was like, oh, crap. So, you know, I had to figure that out. You had to figure it out? Turn it off, turn it back on again. Yeah, that's how the internet works. I, I think, think that's, that's how, how we work. work. Every night, you turn yourself off, and turn it back on again in the morning. Jeff sometimes is, it works, sometimes it doesn't. Jeff is dropping some powerful, powerful yeah, I should probably wisdom. get out of here. 
He's driving some powerful wind yeah. today. <laughs> Indeed. We're, we are all just computer modems. Yes. Well, on a t -shirt. hey, let's do, let's do, let's do a wrap up. Let's, let's do a what, what's going on around here thing. Uh, all right. I do have another. Uh, I'll answer here. questions. Fire away. Uh, Hell yeah. So Marvell Oaks says, I'm debating over a double agent W and soul agent. Gorgeous. Curious as to which hum cutter pairs best with the P90 and a double agent W. The hyper vintage. The hyper vintage pairs very, very well with our P90s and gives you, um, it, it really truly depends on what you're looking for. So for me, um, I always think of like our double agent because I'm so used to that sort of humbucker P90 thing or the um, six gun HPP. And I think the humbucker offers something different than a P90 does, the traditional humbucker does. And I like that just juxtaposition in a guitar like this where you have your P90 tone that's, that's really full and that mid-range EQ is really prominent. And then you go to the bridge humbucker and some of that mid-range disappears out of the middle and you have two very distinct tones. So if, that, if you're looking to maintain that tonal variety, the Hyper Vintage is definitely the way to go because what the Hyper Vintage is going to do is just tighten up the bottom end of this a little bit more, especially if you're playing extremely loud and clean or if you're using heavily distorted tones. Um, it's a great combination for doing hard rock, heavily distorted tones, and then going to the neck pickup for leads and really punching through the mix. If you are looking for a rail hammer that is going to maintain that nasally mid-range quality of the P90 and when you go back and forth there be less of a difference in mids the chisel is going to do it for you uh, the chisel is a lot of mid-range especially in a bolt-on guitar um, also the uh, heavy 90 is an option the heavy 90 is Jeff and I's favorite pickup in the building uh, that, that is one thing that we very much agree on. I run the Heavy 90 or the new uh, Billy Corgan uh, Z1 bridge pickup in all of my guitars that I gig out with, with the exception of my East Sider, of course. And um, I mean, there's no wrong answer to this. It really it just depends on what you're looking for. You know, check out the, the characteristics of the different rail hammers on railhammer.com. I don't think there's anything that you can necessarily go wrong with. Uh, it's just that some of them, there's going to be a wider, to wider tonal difference between the two. So there you have it. I answered your question without answering your question. So you just get one, you'll be happy with it. Try every single one of them. Try every single one of them. <laughs> <laughs> right, Jeff? Yeah, pretty much. Anything right. else, bud? Uh, no. No? Cool. Well, it's St. Patrick's Day. <clears throat> so I knew one of two things was going to happen. People would either rest me up mm -hmm. or they're already wasted. <laughs> it's, you know. I'm neither. Yeah, you got that right. Myself included. Yeah. So uh, let's uh, wrap up the things. Uh, so I had Taya on last week from Meet mm -hmm. Me at the Altar. I went and saw them yeah, last that was the show. It was fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah, to coin a phrase. If I may be so bold and swear on my own show. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to offend anybody. Uh, Meet Me at the Altar completely blew me away. Their live show is badass. Uh, they so much energy, and it's so dialed in. And Taya's guitar tone is crushing. And she rips some monster leads in her set. So all of this, like, self-depreciation yeah, stuff is a bunch of fucking nonsense because yeah. she rips. She's awesome. She and, plays uh, through that Kemper, right? Yeah, and it sounds uh, awesome. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was a really, and all of them. I mean, the drummer's fantastic, the singer's a super amount of energy. Taya sings some stuff. She sings beautifully. I, I am, what an awesome artist. We're lucky to have them involved here. So they, their show was fantastic. Uh, and then uh, after that, I got on a plane and went to Texas for a couple days. Uh, spent some time at the Tone, Tone Shop Guitars in Texas on Monday. Uh, everything is humming along fine at the Tone Shop. They have, they have their East Sider. I don't know if they got these yet or not. Um, but they're doing great. Uh, we played a great shows in Dallas, and we played a great show at South by Southwest. The Reverend Guitars Showcase at South by was really, really cool. Uh, everybody, and we, we are the union. We had three Reverends right across the front of the stage. And, yeah. hmm. It was beautiful. Kill Lincoln is my favorite new band. Uh, I mean, they're not new, but they were, like, new to me seeing them live. Holy crap. They're on. 
uh, and uh, Mike's double agent sounds killer in that band. And of course, uh, our good friends Catbite are incredible. Um, we just, Jer, it was so awesome to see Jer live. And uh, Jer did, uh, played with We Are The Union and then did his own set at South by Southwest, which was really, really cool. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everybody at Bad Times Records um, for having Jay Navarro and the Traders on and thank everybody from Bad Times Records for helping <laughs> Reverend players, I mean, it's just awesome thing we have going on there. Super cool. Um, and then coming up, of course, I said next week I'm going to be right in this chair, and we're going to take apart the Pete Anderson East Sider Custom, uh, which is doing great. That is uh, just a, it's a stunner, folks. It's a stunner. Maybe I'll give you a preview on my way out the door. Mm. What do you think of that? Mm. And then, um, and we are coming into NAM season. Uh, we have two weeks to pack the crates and get all organized and get everything out there. Um, our NAM show has been officially announced. It will be at Chain Reaction in Anaheim on Friday night, featuring Reverend Artists uh, Lilac Cadillac, featuring Reverend Artist Tori Ross, and then uh, Hello Mary with, of course, uh, Helena and Michaela on Reverend Guitar and Bass, and uh, Bad Cop, Bad Cop, and there's going to be other stuff going on at the NAMM show surrounding uh, Stacy D and Lindley from Bad Cop, Bad Cop. Just saying. Uh, all of that is only a month away. Can you believe it, Jeff? It's only a month away. Yeah, I can't believe it. <laughs> and then as soon as we get back from NAMM, um, we are, I, I, I'm going to be anxiously anticipating our crates returning because I'm going to throw those crates in my trailer and drive down to the Dallas International Guitar Festival where Reverend is sponsoring uh, the Reverend Guitars Print and Zents, the Dallas International Guitar Festival Clinician Stage. Mm. And uh, Greg and I will be on it at least twice. Um, so all of you down there, man. I spent a lot spring. of time in Texas, man. Yeah, I love spring. You know, there's uh, It's been pretty miserable so far. Well, yeah, but we're not that far into it. You know, yeah, know. in like a lion and the all that crap. The lousy smart weather. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So yeah, folks, there's... Uh, there's a lot happening, so thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you being here. Check out the new Rick Vito Soul Agent online and check it out at your local Reverend dealer. Uh, I was going to give you a preview of next week, but it's uh, too far away for me to reach. So here's the Soul Agent again, everybody. 